Tuesday, uh, 9.15, we have finished the DC car. Uh, lesson oil change. Customer's supplying oil and doesn't have it yet, so we wait patiently for him to bring the oil. But not too patiently. This is the last night it gets to stay in here. Uh, today, resealed the diff this morning. That took a time. Took a lot of time, a lot of corrosion on there. Got the diff back in the car. At that point, another customer showed up for a scheduled um, oil change and coolant flush on an 03530 manual conversion. That is done. We put this car back on the lift, got the drive shaft installed, everything torqued, exhaust back on with new hardware and fittings. Nate, doesn't this look familiar? Then moved on to coating the ABS or the airbag module, which he had not yet installed. He thought I needed it uh, outside of the car for coating, not the case I needed in the car. So we removed this, the center console, put the module in, coated it to the VIN. There's the old module. Pain in the ass to get that thing out of there. But it's done, it's in, no more codes. Before we had codes for power supply, every airbag in the car, to me it just looked like a haywire module and that turned out to be the case. So uh, same version number, same part number, 2.5 and 727 I think are the part numbers and version numbers installed. Coding is just writing a VIN and then going through the equipment and programming it. So I learned something today. So on the cars that have rear airbags, such as mine, such as this car, there's a sticker, I knew this, of course, on this pillar that shows that they have rear airbags. And there's another sticker, orange in color, that shows that they're not operational. If you code the equipment on the module to say no rear airbags, you get a warning light. The airbag light comes back on. It knows that it's supposed to have them coded on even though they're unplugged. So once I checked the boxes for rear airbags, yes, turn those ignition circuits on, then the light went away and is staying off. So pro tip there. My car, hmm, hmm, what, why, why, that's so much work. This hasn't been out of there in nine years and the blower motor's a little bit whiny. So it comes out, that was a bare unit that I got. I don't even know, probably ECS tuning back in the day. Um, had the new one, started the job today with the intent of finishing the job today, genuine BMW blower motor, put it in, three Torx bolts, uh, fire it up, super nice and quiet. Raise the fan speed at about, if there's 16 settings, it's probably 14, 15, 16. Gets really loud as the fan blade goes totally lopsided and starts to hit into the housing here. Um, annoying as shit. Obviously, they didn't, um, what do you call it, balance the fan blade at full tilt. So, or the balances fell out. So, I'm having another unit sent. It's due Thursday. Got to drive at 530 until then. There's the FSU. So when you're installing an FSU, you are right there in that box and you have to do it from down here. So that's why it's so unpleasant. I'm also retrofitting the solar sensor as part of the O1 Plus climate control with the max AC button. So that's well on its way. This piece of insulation is gonna keep the electrical connector from rattling around. Dashboard modification turned out to be extremely minor. Uh, in that you only need to acquire a sensor. It already snaps in right there. All you gotta do is drill a little hole in the plastic underneath it, shove the wire through, and then run it up on top of the ductwork under there that goes to that vent. So with that done, and I have a new fresh center vent, nice and red, matte plastics. I just figured while well, the dash is out, I'm gonna do that too. So Thursday we'll have the new blower, pop the whole dash in, uh, pop it in. Well, it takes like five hours, but we'll get it done. And while I was in there, I took a bunch of time to clean up wire routing, zip ties, my uh, aftermarket wiring for the black view, dark view camera, as well as solar sensor and front PDC. Good morning. What do we have? 12.30 a.m. Kind of back to the old days here. Staying up later, working later. Today was uh, all in all a very productive day. Um, I had hoped to get the Washington DC car done by Friday, have it out of there by the end of the week. And I'm proud to say it's done on Tuesday night. So he's going to pick it up tomorrow. He was going to supply oil for an oil change. FCP lost the package. I offered to supply the oil. He's like, no, I'm just not, I'm not worried about it. I want to get it aligned and I'll just change the oil myself before I head out to Virginia. So uh, that reduces the work scope for us, which is a good thing with the demand right now. Uh, we need to get back in that Jet Black 540. He wanted to replace the rear swing arm, lower control arms. The problem there is one was in Germany, the other one's in LA. So. I said, you know, there's aftermarket bushings we can do. We can do the Power Flex Black. I don't recommend them for two reasons. Number one, I had them in my car. They groaned, they creaked. I did not like them. There's absolutely no benefit in performance. B, or two, uh, they are an absolute pain in the ass to install. Those factory bushings are not made to be pressed in and out. And you can do it if you have the perfect tool set up and about a 40 ton press. So 
my guess is we'll get the swing arms out. That's not a big deal. Putting them in is a bit, right, Nate? But getting them out isn't terrible. Uh, I will probably spend about an hour fighting with different cups and holding the thing in the in the big press, the hydraulic press, and loading it up, and then it'll slip, and maybe I get one out, and I'm going to say, screw it, I'm going to throw them in a box, and I'm going to sublet it, because I would rather just pay a sublet and outsource and outfarm a little bit than have to spend an entire day fighting with poking four bushings in and out of something that's not meant to be serviced. Um, after that, we've got to work on the washers. Um, thank you for the commenter who let me know about the Home Depot drip line. That sounds like a great idea. Uh, BMW is allegedly making more of these cables for both the standard like non-intensive headlight washing kit um, or cars and the, the, like, the M5s that have the intensive washers. But there's no ETA, they're on order. I've heard this for six months, I'm not holding my breath. In the meantime, we need to get things up and running and that sounds like an inexpensive way to do it. My concern is the time, if I have to chase that line all over the place, shove it in all the little hoses and connectors, cut it, heat it up, push it over the barb, but we'll see how it goes. In the meantime, 12.34, headed to bed, tuck, Wednesday. Good night.